our ability to hold information. Question number three, Katrina Shanks. Speaker to the Minister of Finance, what are the main features of the government's plan to build a more competitive economy based on more savings, high exports and less debt? The Honourable Billings. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker the uh, government has a number of aspects to it planned. The first is to focus on the fo to focus on uh, economic growth, uh, as illustrated by the pr recent publication of a series of documents outlining our, our um, initiatives to support business growth. Uh, secondly, to focus on a path back to surplus so that government debt will stop increasing. Thirdly, to uh, provide better public services uh, and a more productive public sector. And fourthly, to rebuild Christchurch. And basically, the government's plan is roughly on track. Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What results has he seen of progress in the government's programme to build a more competitive economy? The Honourable Bill. Mr. Speaker, uh, in the face of uh, some headwinds from the global economy, economy, we've been able to deal with a number of, make progress with a number of deep-seated problems in the economy. Inflation is under control. And as we've seen today, the cost of living, the cost of living rising by just 0.8 per cent, according to the CPI for September out this morning. Our fiscal policy is roughly on track. Uh, we have growth of 2.6 uh, per cent, which is in the range of 2 to 3 per cent that we've talked about for some time. A net 57,000 more New Zealanders now have jobs than two years ago, and household savings are continuing to rise. Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What reports has he received on the impact of the current global economic situation and its likely impact on New Zealand? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, in recent weeks there has been a number of uh, forecasts relevant uh, to the global economy which have been more subdued uh, than earlier on in the year. Uh, th the forecasts indicate that Europe uh, and emerging economies in particular are likely to grow more slowly than expected. We've yet to see how, those will, how that impact will flow through to New Zealand. Uh, Treasury is going into another forecasting round for the half-year update, which will be released in December. Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What reports has he received on alternative policy approaches which would leave New Zealanders worse off pushing up their cost of living? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I've been um, surprised that reports from parties who have been advocating, political parties who have been advocating in the past uh, to, uh, that the cost of living was rising too rapidly, uh, reports that they are advocating essentially that the Reserve Bank should start printing money now. Uh, of course, that would have the effect of driving the cost of living up further, particularly for the most vulnerable. Question number... Oh, sorry. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. My uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Has he seen the 2010 IMF report entitled "Rethinking Macroeconomic Policy," which finds, quote, that central banks in small open economies like New Zealand should openly recognise that exchange rate stability is part of their objective function? not just inflation targeting, and does he agree with the IMF that the New Zealand dollar is overvalued by about 15 per cent, which is damaging the export sector? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, um, yes, I have seen the report, uh, and the Government has said a number of times that the level of the exchange rate is making it, um, is providing quite a strong headwind for the rebalancing of the New Zealand economy. However, one can't really argue about stability. In fact, the the, one of the issues with the exchange rate is it's been relatively high now for four or five years. Uh, it's uh, to the credit of our exporters, they have been su sufficiently resilient uh, to be able to uh, grow export volume and value in any case. Question number four, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Social Development. Has the